Okay, uh, let's begin. Uh, hello and welcome everyone to the third day of this periodic modular form event. The first speaker of the day is Professor Sian Hao from University of Utah, USA. Today he will speak on periodic automorphic forms and big Igusa varieties. Professor Hao. Uh, thank you and uh, yeah, thanks to the organizers in general for uh, putting together this conference and for uh, giving me a chance to speak. Um, Right, so I'm gonna talk about periodic automorphic forms and big igusa varieties. And let me say what the goal of this talk is. Uh, so I want to explain a natural space of chaotic automorphic forms. Emphasis on automorphic. Uh, to sort of the cat stair space of uh, chaotic modular forms. So I'm sort of upgrade from modular forms to automorphic forms. Uh, and then I want to give some consequences of this upgrade. So two sorts. So uh, one type of consequence will just be illuminating some classical structure on chaotic modular forms. Uh, but then also there are some philosophical consequences about the kinds of places we should look um, for studying automorphic forms and so how we should think about automorphic forms. Um, and so a partial reference uh, for some of this material is the paper, uh, a unipotent circle action on chaotic modular forms, uh, which you can find on my website. Um, that doesn't have everything that is in this talk, but it at least has some of the things. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna fix the notation to begin with. So I'm gonna fix some compact open subgroup in GL2 of AF. So this is just to fix some level. Um, maybe fix it sufficiently small. Uh, and then I'll let yk be a modular curve of level k, so the open modular curve. So, uh, and then uh, let me write, I won't use this much, but let me just write pi for the universal elliptic curve over yk. Uh, and then I'll write omega for the modular bundle over y. So this is just the push forward differentials on the univ. Okay, uh, okay so it's just, just the modular line bundle. Okay, um, good. so and I want to explain sort of what these automorphic forms are to, these p-adic automorphic forms are sort of in the relation to p-adic modular forms. Uh, but before I do that, I'd like to recall uh, the Archimedean story. Uh, so, so just to fix in our head an idea of, sort of what are automorphic forms and what are uh, modular forms uh, for GL2 uh, and sort of how they're related to each other. Okay, so we have, uh, on the one hand, we have automorphic forms. And so everything here is for GL2. Um, on the p-adic side, so it's even more specific than for GL2. And I'll say something about that at the end, but, but here this is for GL2. So we have, I'll just denote it as sort of a script A, subscript C to denote complex automorphic forms. And then K is a superscript to distinguish, to indicate the level. So this is contained in the set of all C infinity functions, so all smooth functions on GL2 of Q, sorry, I'm sorry, on GL2 of the Dells. Uh, mod GL2 Q on the left and K on the right. So these are smooth, func smooth complex valued functions. Um, if this Adelic formulation is not familiar to you, then uh, uh, as I, especially for maybe students for participating in this, um, then you could also sort of think of something like GL2 of R mod GL2 of Z. Um, it's the sort of sort of thing you can 
see here. Um, so in particular, this has an action of GL2 of R on it. So sort of I've modded out by a subgroup of the finite adels on the right. So I've sort of lost the action of the finite adels, but I still have my GL2 of R action. And so in the space of automorphic forms, well, this is distinguished in terms of this action. So the K finiteness condition, well, let me not write it, but you put some condition, which is K finiteness um, uh, and uh, growth condition. So you know, sort of some growth, growth condition at uh, uh, rational parabolics. Uh, okay, and so, so that's sort of what automorphic form, forms are. Uh, they're not, uh, I guess I should say, so they have an action. So this part doesn't have an action of GL2 of R anymore, but it has an action of the Lie algebra and then sort of an action of a C star so this is sort of embedded in GL2 of R, so just the non-split torus, uh, in a way I'll make precise in a moment. Okay, and then on the other hand, we have modular forms, which and you define them different ways. I and mean, one way to define them is sort of these functions satisfying this transformation property on the upper half plane. Um, I'm just going to sort of define them directly by the sort of geometric definition. Um, so I'll say MK, so this is the space of weight K modular forms. So it's going to be contained in the global sections of this complex, so my modular curve YK, I think it's, a, it's a complex analytic space. I take uh, sections of this, the K power of this line bundle omega. Uh, and then and so this is distinguished by a uh, growth condition at the cusps. Uh, so it's not everything in here, but so it's distinguished by the growth rate of the cusps. Um, and so what's the relation between these two? Different spaces. Well, let me say it allowed first and then I'll sort of specify very precisely how you see it because they're useful to see it in a precise and sort of slightly more canonical way than it's normally said. Um, so the space of automorphic forms uh, inside it sort of has different sub-representations and among these are sort of sub so sub-representations for this GL2 or for this, this action. Uh, and so you have certain dis sub discrete series, discrete series sub-representations appearing there. And so those are sort of representations that have uh, lowest weight vector in them. Uh, and uh, these modular forms, so you put them inside of the space of all automorphic forms and they get sort of identified with these sort of lowest weight generators of these discrete series representations. So they're uh, some, you can all, you, you end up thinking of them as being uh, automorphic forms that are sort of distinguished, sort of distinguished vectors in the representations they generate uh, in this case by being lowest weight. Uh, but let me let me say how that happens because it's useful to think about. So if I think about this modular curve, well, this is just parameterizing pairs with E and I'll write psi. So E is an elliptic curve over the complex numbers, or just a two-dimensional complex, or sorry, a one complex dimensional torus. Um, and then psi. Uh, is the level K structure. Um, so, so you can interpret that uh, as being sort of some like some, some, some information about torsion points on E, for example, uh, depending sort of what this group K is. And there are other ways to think about it as well, but uh, you can fix that one in your mind if you're uh, looking for one to hold on to. Um, Okay, and so there's sort of a nice way to build to build an elliptic curve, starting with 
sort of a piece of data parameterized by this set that's appearing in the definition of automorphic forms, uh, and then some other piece of data. So if I look at the set GL2 of Q mod GL2 of A mod K, well, I can think of this actually as parameterizing the following objects. So triples T and uh, phi and psi, where T is a two-dimensional real torus. I mean, there's just one of those. It's S1 times S1, but these are not fixed coordinates. Uh, phi is an isomorphism between the Lie algebra of T and R squared. And then uh, psi is this level K structure. So if you think about sort of the torsion points on a complex torus, well, that doesn't depend on the fact that it's a complex torus. It's sort of something intrinsic to sort of the real torus structure and the group structure is coming from the real torus already. Uh, so you can already make sense of the level K structure on your real torus. Um, and so how do you get this identification? Well, like I said, sort of there's only one real torus up to isomorphism. There's this S1 times S1. Uh, and so you take that and then you fix so you fix some, some trivialization of its Lie algebra, and then you uh, fix some level K structure, and then you sort of just take sort of the orbit under the natural actions of sort of GL2 of the Dells on that data. So GL2 of R is sort of acting on uh, this trivialization of the Lie algebra, and then uh, sort of the finite Adels or the GL2 of the finite Adels is sort of acting on the level K structure. And so you sort of end up with this identification. Um, okay, good. So once you have that piece of information, uh, in order to get an elliptic curve, you just need to equip your complex torus, or you need to equip your real torus of a complex structure. Uh, and so you can do that now, though, by just equipping the Lie algebra of a complex structure. And the Lie algebra we've identified with R squared. So uh, this, so this is the upper and lower half plane, and I'm thinking of this there is a natural way is uh, uh, so the moduli of complex structures on R squared. Uh, okay, and so I have the product of these two spaces. And so if I take a torus and then it's complex structure, I put them together, I get an elliptic curve. Uh, and I have this level K structure, so I throw that in again. And so I get to sort of a point of YC. Of course, any point of YC can be obtained this way. Um, and there's some redundancy in how you do this. So the redundancy in how you make, uh, so you choose this, this data to get your elliptic curve is exactly uh, the action of GL2 of R. So, uh, So this is a GL2 of R torsor. And just, I mean, this is not, and this is a map of real manifolds, I should say, I should point out, I mean, this thing on the left is not a complex manifold. Um, so the upper half plane and sort of Y are both complex manifolds, but this thing over here doesn't have a natural structure of a complex manifold. Um, and so what's this GL2 R action? Well, GL2 of R acts on both of these things. So on the right, just by sort of multiplication on the GL2 of R factor, or sorry, on this part, just by multiplication on GL2 R factor. On this thing, through linear fractional transforms. But really, I mean, both of these are just, and you have R squared in sort of both these sets of data. So it's just in, induced by the action of GL2 R on R squared. Um, maybe a word about how I identify H plus or minus with the upper and lower half line with complex structures. Um, if I have a complex structure on R2, then sort of I have some matrix J whose square is uh, minus one. And so if I sort of complexify R2 and I look at C2, um, then I have uh, sort of a matrix J that now has sort of an I and a minus I eigenvalue. And sort of I just take the I eigenspace. And so that's in P1. And then I just look at the upper lower half plane sort of living inside of P1. So. Upper and lower half plane, just I take the complex numbers, uh, P1 of the complex numbers, I remove P1 of the real numbers. 
that's how you can make this identification. Uh, okay, so I have this relation that sort of includes the space I'm, uh, where automorphic forms are functions and sort of the space where uh, 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 modular forms are sort of sections of line bundles. And uh, let me give this map a name. I'll call it just, I'll write UNIF. So it's the uniformization map. And we observe that if I pull back this modular bundle omega, then what I get is the same as the pullback from sort of the second projection. So this thing, so this product projects to both factors. And so let me write pi two for just the product projection to the second factor of uh, the line bundle O of minus one. So O of minus one, that's a line bundle on the P1, but so it's also by restriction a line bundle on the upper and lower half plane. Um, and this is sort of a GL2R equivariant identification. Okay, um, so I could, if I really wanted to make sort of completely not, completely canonical the relation between modular forms um, and automorphic forms, I would sort of stop here and say something, but let me keep on going a little bit and make it a little less canonical, but I mean, a little less canonical in the same way that the definition of automorphic forms and sort of involves choosing a non-split torus. So we'll have sort of the same level of non-canonicity non here. Uh, so I can restrict this map, uh, this uniformization map. To uh, so just a single point in the right-hand factor. So just I'll take i in the upper half plane, uh, and then. And it turns out the map is still surjective when you do that. And the point being that the GL2R action on the upper lower half plane is transitive. Um, and when I do this, I don't have a GL2R torsor anymore, but I do have a torsor for the stabilizer of that point, uh, which is C cross. Um, so when I say torsor, I just like one way to interpret it is there's a C cross action on the left hand side or a GL2R action on the left hand side above. Uh, and sort of the thing on the right is just the quotient by that action. Uh, okay. Uh, good. So the C star torsor, where C star here really is, well, this is the stabilizer of I inside of GL2R. Uh, so for the action on the upper and lower half plane. Uh, which is isomorphic to certain to the isomorphism of C star uh, is given by the action on O of minus one restricted to I. So if I take this line bundle O of minus one, um, well, it's an equivariant line bundle, so the sort of the stabilizer of a point acts on the fiber at any at that point. Um, so now you have sort of an action. Of the stabilizer on this one dimensional complex vector space. And that sort of identifies that stabilizer with C star. Uh, okay. Good. So, good. Uh, so now, now we can, now we can say the relation cleanly. So let me choose a trivialization T. of this line bundle sort of restricted to the point I, so just of this one dimensional complex vector space. I'm just choosing a basis of this one dimensional complex vector space. Uh, and from this, I get an evaluation map. Uh, going from weight K modular forms to, in fact, it's going to, so it's going to land in the space of automorphic forms. Uh, and what does this do? It sends a weight K modular form F 
to, uh, well, I pull back F by the uniformization map. So now sort of I have a section of the pullback of omega, which is the same as the pullback of O of minus one. Uh, and uh, then, but I have a trivialization of sort of O of minus one sort of on that point I. And so I sort of divide it by uh, T to the K. So T to the K gives you trivialization of omega to the K after this pullback. Um, and now this is really, now this is really just a function. So I'm sort of just expressing F with respect to this trivialization after I pull back. Um, so, let's say in the image of this map, actually sort of consists exactly of, uh, of automorphic forms, so automorphic functions. Oops, I lost my color. So this consists of functions uh, which transform by a so z goes to z to the k under c star. inside of GL2 of R. So uh, that's the, so this is the C star I said before, but that was still acting on the space of automorphic forms. Uh, and well, sort of plus or minus K sort of depending on how I've normalized things, which I'm not totally sure actually at this point. Um, and uh, so it's annihilated by uh, right, so n sub i. So this is sort of the one dimensional nilpotent subgroup, uh, subalgebra in GL2, the Lie algebra of GL2 sort of corresponding to this point i, which is sort of actually a point of the flag variety. So sort of corresponding to this subspace. Uh, And so the second part of this fact is annihilated by this uh, by this sort of unipotent uh, this unipotent or this nilpotent Lie algebra inside of here, because this one dimensional nilpotent Lie algebra inside of here is uh, or billion Lie algebra inside of here, uh, the Lie algebra of the unipotent subgroup, uh, that's sort of the corresponding Borel. Uh, what what's that corresponding to? Well, and somehow the point is like the complex structure on Y sort of in terms of this uniformization is really coming from the complex structure on uh, the upper and lower half plane. Um, and so uh, wait, if I've set this up correctly, uh, which hopefully I have, uh, so the vector field sort of especially the vector fields are expressing sort of differentiation with respect to Z bar on here. Uh, so once I sort of restrict to just a single point, um, sort of can, can be identified just sort of with the action, uh, the, the vector field is sort of the action of that subgroup on the GL2R component over here. Um, so here, and the reason this works is really, I mean, some of the reason this, that you can do this is really because sort of you've restricted to sort of just a single point. Like that's the reason you can sort of lift uh, the differential offer like dz bar on, on the space. So that's why you, you can lift this vector field on the space uh, to a vector field up here that's really determined by the group action. Um, okay. Uh, but so, and this is saying, and this is encoding that you get a lowest weight vector. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm, k's and minus k's and sort of lowest and highest weights may be confused here. Uh, Okay, and so so that's the story, and that's the relation between sort of modular forms and automorphic forms, um, sort of over the complex numbers, and and I guess what I'd like to highlight is like automorphic forms, 
I mean, even if you only restrict to the discrete series representations that, even if, if you only restrict to the discrete series representations that sort of you're seeing from modular forms. So of course there are other representations appearing here that we won't see from modular forms. Um, but, but that's fine, like, like just restrict the ones we see, like somehow it's not really more information to have the whole automorphic representation, but it is more structure to have the whole, whole automorphic representation. And, and for various purposes, it can be useful to sort of think about having that extra structure and sort of how that extra structure plays in. So in just one example uh, is uh, like Matsushima's formula, sort of, which lets you compute sort of like the Durham cohomology of finite level modular curves or like uh, these sort of standard local, set, local systems on uh, finite level modular curves. I mean, sort of, if you think about what's going on in uh, Matsushima's formula is you're sort of really using this uniformization uh, and sort of the fact that, and sort of the related fact that sort of you can express differentiation uh, in terms of, so it's related to the fact that sort of this thing is done annihilated by, that you can sort of lift this dz bar. You can also sort of lift sort of dz uh, to sort of something defined group theoretically. Um, and, and so, I mean, somehow using this uniformization by the space over here where automorphic forms live um, really lets you express sort of like the Durham complex uh, sort of purely uh, representation theoretically. So even though yeah, somehow on the one hand, it's not more information, but it is more structure and sort of the right structure to use often for thinking because, and then the reasons right, you have sort of more representation, like, you have more things floating around that you can sort of make representation theoretic arguments because you have sort of more, you have sort of a group acting or the algebra at least acting to work with. Um, so somehow there are sometimes reasons to make this upgrade from modular forms to automorphic forms. Uh, okay. Uh, there are other reasons too, but that's sort of one example. Um, good. So that's thought of the Archimedean story. So. I'd better get to the Piatic story. So, uh, let me fix my level K now to be sort of full level FP uh, and uh, also prime to P level KP, let's just, and at some point I want to take KP to be uh, probably gamma one N. And well, I, I don't know if I'll get to that level of granularity. At some point it might be convenient to sort of make this choice to sort of reduce the notation. So may as well do that from the start. Um, at the very least, uh, maybe let's always take it uh, so that the determinant of all of K is sort of all the z hat cross. So I'm sort of not going to have one connected component on my modular curve. Um, okay. So, uh, good. So then we have, two definitions of piatic modular forms. I'm um, gonna call the space of piatic modular forms M sub QP. Um, so the Serre's definition. Uh, and so Serre defines the space of piatic modular forms to be, well, you take just the sum over all K of the Q expansions of uh, global sections of Uh, modular sheaf weight K. And you intersect that with, right, I could have just put MK there, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to do this intersection anyway. Uh, my intersects are just those have rational Q expansions. So this is, this intersection is taking place as sort of formal power series over C double brackets T. Um, but in fact, so if I look at this, this is actually going to be contained in sort of uh, 
power series. So this intersection will be contained in power series with bounded, uh, sort of piatically bounded coefficients. Um, and I can complete for the soup norm on those coefficients. Uh, and so that gives me MQP. Okay, so that's one construction. I'll, I'll say, and so, so, so by definition, then this is a QP Bonnach space. Um, okay, uh, and then there's the geometric interpretation of this uh, due to Katz. And so what Katz says is sort of the following. Uh, so I'll come back after I sort of say Katz is, recall Katz's construction, construction, I will uh, say some things about sort of properties and features of PF modular forms and so why this is something people want to do. Um, so we have a map. So he constructs a space, I'll call it the cats a use of writing, I'll denote it sub cats. Um, and it's going to be a torsor for the group ZP cross in some sense, or has a ZP cross action on it anyway, uh, uh, over the sort of formal completion of the ordinary locus. So the organ ordinary locus is sort of, uh, this is, A piatic formal scheme is over Swift ZP. Uh, and so the ordinary locus is just a locus for all of the, uh, on, on sort of the special fiber of the integral model. So I get an integral model because I took GL2 ZP, uh, corresponding to elliptic curves or that are ordinary, um, the complement of the super singular locus or sort of the non vanishing set of the Haas invariant, however you prefer to have it. Um, and so that's sort of something in character P and then I sort of piatically complete on it to get a, I get a formal scheme. Uh, okay. And so the cats moduli problem, so the cats is sort of also a piatic formal scheme uh, and it parameterizes uh, triples E uh, phi and psi. So this is supposed to evoke previous notation where E over R is an elliptic curve. Uh, psi is level K structure. Just like before. Um, and now phi is going to be, uh, phi is going to be a trivialization of the formal group of E. So one natural possible choice for, if you look at sort of the complex story, we had something similar to this. It was so over here, wasn't quite the same, but we were trivializing the Lie algebra of a real torus. And so this is sort of related to that. Uh, but in a good replacement for the Lie algebra, when you're working to, where to P is topologically no potent, uh, uh, is the formal group. I mean, somehow the algebras aren't, it's nicely behaved. Uh, this will turn out to be the, I mean, let me sort of give the punchline now. I and mean, the, the, for these purposes, this is the wrong choice of an analog of uh, the Lie algebra. So really you want to take the full P divisible group, um, but sort of this is what Katz did. So Katz took uh, a trivialization of the Lie algebra. And so the reason and being over the ordinary locus is essentially equivalent to their existing uh, such a trivialization to GM hat. Um, okay. Uh, and so then the ZP cross sort of just acts on this trivialization. Uh, so that's why there's a ZP cross action and sort of, well, your choices of trivialization sort of an orbit of ZP cross. And so when you forget that, uh, you just sort of land back we forget the trivialization, so we just forget that ZP cross action or orbit of things, and so we land uh, at the ordinary locus, so, uh, the formal ordinary locus. Okay, and so then K 
Katz's interpretation is that the space of p-adic modular forms, mqp, is just functions on, well, let me write a star there. So function, functions on this Katz moduli problem sort of then invert p. Um, so uh, functions on this formal scheme that then invert p. Uh, so here, this is just the star is a compactification, uh, which is sort of just it lets you handle cusps. I mean, they include, and it's just this growth condition sort of appearing in some other guys, uh, some geometric guys. Uh, okay. Um, good. And so, and how do you see a relation between this cat's abuser problem, this cat's sort of this cat's uh, Agusa moduli space uh, and sort of Sayre's definition. Well, we should at least say how modular forms become functions on here. So you have, uh, let me say it this way. So a weight k modular form over QP instead of C, but let me just write MK again. Uh, and so what you do is you send something, the modular form F to F, and then you think, so just like in this automorphic forms over the complex number setting, you take F and you divide it. So you just get the, you express it in terms of a canonical trivialization. So you have a trivialization of the modular sheaf coming from sort of pulling back uh, the invariant differential on GM hat. So, so if your invariant differential on GM hat sort of gives you sort of like a differential on, on E hat and then sort of uh, so it extends uniquely to an invariant differential on all of E. Uh, and that's, uh, so that sort of gives you a trivialization. Uh, okay, uh, and so this is now a function. And so this function sort of transforms, oh, sorry, I have to take this trivialization and then to the kth power because F is a weight K. And so this transforms via Z goes to Z to the K under ZP cross. Just because sort of that's how the trivialization phi transforms. And so that's how sort of the pullback of this trivialization transforms. Um, again, sort of same disclaimer about Ks and minus Ks. So, and then, and then so that at least puts classical modular forms as functions on these things. Uh, and uh, they, it's actually, and it's not so much more work to show that they're really dense inside of here. Uh, okay. um, so what are some features of this space? So features of p-adic modular, modular forms. Um, well, this is sort of the motivating feature. And so it's why where Sarah's definition sort of comes from is it's encodes congruences uh, between Q expansions which is essentially the same as encoding congruences between Hecke eigensystems. So that sort of eigenforms and I get sort of and then, of course, this is useful if you want to sort of compare with sort of deformation of the Galois representations. Um, good. Uh, so weights sort of behave nicer. So weights go from sort of having just integer weights. You now get sort of all characters of ZP cross. So, and this is a little bit subtle to see from Sarah's interpretation. Um, but from Katz's interpretation, it's sort of fairly straightforward. I mean, you like we saw some classical modular forms included in sort of this space where you're transforming by z goes to z to k under the zp cross action. But you could sort of take any character of zp cross and look at sort of that character space inside, and so that sort of gives you a natural, uh, a natural uh, uh, notion of sort of modular forms of p-adic weight, p-adic modular forms of p-adic weight. Um, and particularly once you have weights, you can sort of look at families 
sort of that are sort of essentially parameterized by their weights. Uh, so, uh, for example, and this is maybe the first application of the do of piatic modular forms uh, was to do sort of this for the Eisenstein, Eisenstein series and sort of use this to study uh, uh, piatic L functions through the constant coefficient. Um, but you can also sort of look at HEDA families, uh, for example. And I might, hopefully we'll say something about that in a moment. Um, and you have, so you have UP and a Frobenius operator. So, and so we started off with things of level, sort of full level at P, but actually sort of, you can get classical modular forms of any level sort of gamma not P to the N uh, living inside of here and even sort of, if you think a little bit more carefully, uh, gamma one p to then, um, uh, and so and you actually and you really get a up operator uh, that agrees with the up operator uh, on those guys, uh, and you, and you get a Frobenius operator, and so these are sort of I mean, one way to see these exist is sort of by explicit computations of Q expansions. You can sort of approximate these and see that you get them. Uh, they. So they have a simple moduli interpretation as well. Um, we'll see them sort of in a minute. We'll see them sort of really as genuine heck operators, um, sort of in the same way we see any heck operator. Uh, and then there's uh, this uh, differential operator theta, which is Q times D over DQ. And so this is related to the Gessman in connection. Uh, so in the sense that sort of if I, like, well, if I sort of embed and sort of weight zero and weight two forms, like then theta sort of is just expressing the Gessman in connection. Um, sort of more generally sort of, they can express it, uh, uh, Sort of for for any of these, uh, sorry, it's, it's, yeah, works for, for the higher symmetric powers too. Sort of suitably interpreted. Um, okay, um, good. So, so these are some, these are some features of chaotic modular forms, and uh, in this one, there's a, different ways you construct theta. Uh, you can do it sort of again by. Uh, and maybe I think you can do it by approximation, but you, and you can also sort of, yeah, and so there's some clever ways you can do it. Um, so you can, and so there's a way to think about it sort of related to sort of comparing different splittings of uh, of the Hodge filtration. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll come back. This is sort of something in particular that we'll see has a very nice sort of origin and sort of uh, explanation. And so th in this, in particular, sort of related to this, this is related to the piatic setting to sort of this Matsushima formula uh, for classical automorphic forms. Uh, okay, so, and actually though, in like, so let me make a claim. And the claim is gonna be like, this is not sort of a good space of automorphic forms. Um, this is not an entirely clear claim because in, in many ways, this looks sort of like a lot like what I did for, it's a lot like how we got automorphic forms. I mean, sort of this cat's moduli problem, uh, I mean, it has this DP cross action. So I've sort of replaced sort of having sections of the line bundle really with sort of having things that transform in a certain way. So that's good. Um, uh, but, and somehow that this sort of, I haven't gone up far enough actually, and I'm sort of missing some extra useful structure. Um, so let me say, sort of, one way to think about this is this is like, sort of, if you sort of only looked at highest weight or lowest weight vectors in uh, sort of complex automorphic forms. So, in modular forms get embedded as lowest weight vectors, but like really to take advantage of the extra structure you get, like you remember that there's more than just the lowest weight vectors in there. In particular, like you remember that you can level rate, or you can sort of uh, have a raising operator. And, uh, and if you just, if all you do is sort of 
look at the lowest weight vectors with their sort of C star action, like you haven't really gained much by sort of moving to the space of automorphic forms. Um, definitely sort of haven't sort of promoted yourself to a Lie algebra representation sort of in any useful way. Okay, so, uh, and so the point of sort of getting a space of chaotic automorphic forms is to get something better. So, so that's the description. So how to get something better. Uh, okay. So let me sort of give two different perspectives. Uh, so when we were defining chaotic modular forms, we had sort of the serif perspective and this cat's perspective. So let me say first what you should do in the serif's per perspective, and I won't be super detailed about it, but so in the serif perspective, sort of what you should do is instead of completing uh, uh, or instead of, let me say, interpolating the spherical vectors, so yeah, so this in when we fix this level to be GL two of ZP, when we sort of define Serre's chaotic modular forms, so we're only taking Q expansions of things sort of a full level at P. That means we're really like, we're looking only at and we're looking only at sort of automorphic representations that have sort of GL2ZP invariant vectors. So that's sort of, we're sort of looking, and then we're looking at that distinguished spherical vector inside. Um, so, I mean, this is like somehow maybe a little bit like in some, like looking at a lowest weight vector. I mean, you're really picking out a distinguished vector and you're interpolating that distinguished vector. Um, so instead of interpolating the spherical vectors, so we can interpolate the whole automorphic representation. So that can mean something much fancier than what's going to happen here. Um, so when we're looking at the Q expansion, in what we can do in order to, and the Q expansion sort of, and somehow is very closely related to the Kirillov model. So sort of uh, the Kirillov model for the automorphic representation. Uh, and so what we can do is actually sort of we can interpolate so sort of the full Kirillov models. So, so the Kirillov model for this sort of automorphic representation like sort of embeds it uh, as a space of functions on QP cross. Um, and uh, yeah, also I'll, I'll, I'll come back in a minute to something a little bit more specific about that. Uh, but that's the idea. So you, so you can do this and then sort of, you just end up, sort of, you sort of take the standard Kirillov models, you have to renormalize a little bit, which sort of corresponds to sort of fix it. And it corresponds to sort of the same thing that happened, uh, like dividing by some trivialization essentially. Um, so, but you take this Kirillov model, smooth Kirillov model, you renormalize, uh, and then you sort of put them all together, sort of just as functions on QP cross and you complete for, Sort of the the get bounded functions once you do this renormalization, you complete for the sort of the soup norm again, um, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and this really I'll give a precise consequence of why this is sort of a naive thing to do and sort of not nearly as complicated as other ways you can complete. But in particular, and this is not like a GL two QP equivalent. Like there's this norm is not sort of preserved by GL two QP. So this is not like a unitary, making a unitary represent of GL two QP, um, uh, it's sort of it's only preserved by like the mirabolic, um, so it's sort of something less less fancy. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So good. Uh, so and what do you do from Cat's perspective? Uh, so you use a better moduli problem. So instead of this 
uh, Katz exudes sobriety, use the Cariani Schultz exudes sobriety. And so this is, again, the sort of a formal scheme that parameterizes triples E, phi, and psi uh, such that E and, e and, and psi are was before. So E is what the curve, psi is the level structure. And now psi is E, P, infinity. It's the trivialization of the full formal group. Or sorry, of the full P divisible group. So you don't just trivialize the formal group, you trivialize all sorts of the tall parts. So you trivialize it sort of to this product of GM hat times QP mod ZP. Um, so in FPQC locally over the ordinary locus, you really can do this. And you can always sort of split. Uh, you can in locally sort of you get these non-trivial extensions of QP mod ZP by GM hat. Uh, but you can always you can always split those extensions of Rafter as suitably ramified phase change. Um, okay, and so in, well, this is this is a good thing. Um, and then uh, so chaotic automorphic forms will just be functions on this guy, uh, so base change to OCP. And then improve Q. So, and the space change to OCP, or sort of at least something that has sort of all roots unity, is important also sort of uh, for this Sarah, Sarah, for doing this sort of SER perspective uh, as well. Um, okay. Uh, and so, why is this so much better? Well, now you've really passed the full level. And sort of the thing that happens when you pass the full level, like sort of away from P is you would sort of, instead of getting just an action of GL2 ZP, like you'd expect, you get an action of GL2 QP, you would sort of promote everything to an isogeny action. And so and that's because you can sort of change your moduli interpretation sort of at sort of infinite level to an isogeny moduli interpretation. And so you can also sort of give this an isogeny moduli interpretation. And so that's really good for two reasons. So the first reason is you're going to get a very, a, a much larger group acting. So you're gonna get sort of the group of isogenies of, of this guy uh, acting. And I'll say what that is sort of more concretely in a moment. Um, the other big thing is you find, so you discover this formal scheme is really, I mean, it's a formal scheme over, it's a formal scheme over ZP, but actually sort of, it's just the width vectors of the, a perfect ring. So it's the width vectors of its special fiber. And another way to say this, it's not, you know, somehow it's not really a formal, like what it really is is sort of, it's just a perfect scheme and sort of like you can sort of promote it to a formal scheme by taking the width vectors, but uh, you're not really gaining any extra information sort of in maybe a, a sense that can be made precise that I don't want to make precise here. But um, so you moved from something that, and so maybe the point is that you shouldn't think of this as being a piatic Fourier scheme or sort of a piatic analytic variety. You should think of this as being a perfect scheme. Um, and so this is a lot like uh, what happened in the Archimedean setting, where sort of we had this like GL2 of A mod GL2 of Q uh, showing up, uh, which was not a complex analytic variety, it was just a smooth manifold. And so this is sort of the same idea. Um, okay. Uh, good. So, what's the group action we get? Well, on this moduli interpretation, you get you get sort of something that looks like a Borel. So you get QP cross, QP cross, and then so you have an X. And so, X of sort of a periodically complete ring R is continuous characters of QP in sort of R cross. So just for example, X of ZP is trivial because like you don't have sort of arbitrary P roots of anything in ZP. And so QP is a divisible group, so a P divisible group. So this is sort of only get the trivial character. Um, so you don't see this sort of classic, and like anything that sort of finally generated over ZP, you wouldn't see this. Uh, you do see it though, once you go up to something big like OCP, so now this is sort of 
there's the limit as x goes to x of p is sort of one plus the maximal ideal. So this is sort of the open unit ball around one uh, in OCP. So I mean, this x is some also, depending on the language you like, this is the universal cover of GM hat. Uh, it's also just hom from QP to GM hat. Uh, but sort of, in this automorphic saying, I prefer to think of it as sort of just this continuous characters. Uh, okay, so in particular, this chiatic automorphic forms, ACP, um, I, sorry, I should put a compactification in here as well, uh, Tandle's growth condition. Um, this has an action of QP cross zero QP cross, and then we have sort of this enormous group up here. Uh, okay. Uh, so in how does this help us? Well, the Katsugu is a problem. You can present it as a quotient of this thing. So this quotient out by sort of one ZP1. So ZP1 is sort of living inside of these space of characters. So the characters are valued in roots of unity, but so sort of there are many that are sort of not valued in roots of unity. Um, and then ZP cross down here. Okay, and uh, so then, well now, uh, sort of cat's modular form, like so now sort of chaotic modular forms. So if I sort of base change the CP, this is sort of ACP, it's just invariance under sort of one ZP one, zero ZP cross. Uh, and so you get in so the ZP cross action is sort of just coming from sort of the leftover ZP cross action from the top left factor. And then the UP and Frobenius are just sort of HECA operators coming from sort of P plus or minus one, zero, zero, one. So depending, maybe I should multiply that by something central to get the right normalizations, but something like this. Uh, so, and these are just sort of HECA operators in the standard way. HECA operators are just like these coset operators. Um, and then I mean, let me say something Sort of interesting you get. And so this is ZP1 mod X. This is GM hat, and actually this acts on ig cats. So we can present sort of ig cats in a different way. To sort of emphasize this. So it's also equal to sort of a connected component of this Cardinal Schultz user variety mod now just one ZP1 zero one. And so that sort of has a residual action of sort of X mod ZP1, which is GM hat. And in this action integrates the vector field th theta. So I mean, this is quite nice. I mean, you really see that this differential operator theta, which sort of classically and is a little bit obtuse to define. Uh, and so it's not really clear where it's coming from. I mean, it's really coming from just this big group action um, and in particular, uh, uh, I mean, some of the, it's very similar to, it's very similar to the, the Matsushima's formula, for example, uh, where uh, sort of DZ is sort of also expressed in sort of a group action. Um, uh, and so the, and you can see sort of, and from this perspective, so you can see the relation to the gauss man and connection sort of, I mean, so without, like sort of by pure thought, so without making any computations. Um, and yeah, so and there are lots of other things. I, mean, I guess, yeah, I should stop because it's 9.30. Uh, there, there are other things you can do. So you can sort of think about how over convert, like, you can sort of think about what representation theoretic information is contained in sort of like a specific HECA eigen system where you have sort of action as group. And so what you find is essentially it remembers whether or not uh, whether or not sort of the local representation of P was reducible and sort of, uh, you can sort of think of, sort of rethink about all of HEDA theory in this context. Um, and yeah, I, so okay, so let me stop there. I'm sorry, but I, otherwise I'll go over time.
Thank you, Professor Howe, for this beautiful talk. Uh, now it's time for questions. Are there any questions from the audience? Yeah, so uh, what is your last comment? So HEDA theory and all you can reinterpret using this uh, thing, uh, your interpretation? Yeah, so, so this is related to so this Sarah perspective. So um, let me sort of say uh, something about that. So, so like if I look at sort of this space of homomorphic forms and I look at sort of like the row eigenspace, so I take some Galois representation and I look at sort of the corresponding Hecke eigen system in here. So now this is a representation sort of just of this local group at P. Uh, and uh, I guess this has an action. Uh, and uh, so if rho restricted GQP is uh, irreducible, um, so this is sort of something, right? this is if you're not ordinary, like if this sort of the corresponding sort of chaotic modular form is not ordinary, uh, then this is just equal to, uh, okay, so this Kirillov model says, business says that You can sort of think of this as being living inside of uh, sort of bounded functions from QP cross to CP. Uh, and so under this hypothesis that sort of you're irreducible or sort of the, the non-ordinary setting, um, what you find is then this is just really equal to, uh, uh, this is equal to uh, just uh, functions which go to zero at sort of zero and infinity. Um, okay, and so, and this, and I should say, in this space has an action sort of QP cross is x zero one. So this has an action sort of this like twisted mirabolic, um, where sort of characters of CP just act sort of as multiplication by that function on, on, on this space. Um, and so this not, so this embedding is sort of respects this action. And so what that tells you is when rho is irreducible, the only thing remembered about sort of, the only thing this, this sort of automorphic representation remembers about rho restricted GQP is its central character. So sort of that's what you deduce. And, and when what you can think is just like, if you have a smooth representation, uh, and you look at sort of a smooth Kirillov model, I mean, so you see something similar going on where like, if you're not, uh, and if you're not a principal series, uh, yeah, and so if, if you're super cuspidal, then your Kirillov model just consists of compactly supported functions. Um, and so here sort of the same things happens now, sort of Kirillov model uh, sort of is, then this is what you get when you complete compactly supported functions. So you get functions that vanish, which go to zero and zero and infinity. Um, so it's sort of, and then this, that's actually sort of basically how you prove that this is true. Um, if it's re, if it's reducible, so that sort of is the ordinary case. Um, then sort of you get sort of just you get the same thing, but then you sort of get sort of a single vector um, uh, f, uh, sort of which sort of is. So the character uh, of QP cross sort of corresponding to the weight, the weight to the weight and uh, uh, UP eigenvalue of the ordinary form. Um, so you have to truncate this at infinity. Uh, so you, and you get I mean, this ordinary form sort of really shows up inside of the Kirillov model sort of in the natural way, uh, in, inside this sort of completed Kirillov model in a natural way. Um, but, but, and you can really, I mean, you can use this to sort of, sort of think in a different way about like, for example, he does fineness and classicality theorems. Um, so, uh, you can actually sort of, I, I, I think it's sort of so much a, a new proof, just a reinterpretation of 
see this proof. Um, but uh, I mean, it is it essentially like like for, sort of like he does find this for, for for ordinary forms sort of follows from uh, that follows uh, just from sort of the admissibility of the Jacquet module of an admissible representation. Sort of once you sort of know that uh, sort of weight two modular forms that sort of arbitrarily high level sort of were dense uh, were were dense already in ACP, and then sort of uh, you can also sort of do. Uh, you can also sort of see classicality in sort of a similar way. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so, so I mean, there's, there's a way to sort of, in particular, this finiteness statement, I mean, really is, it's just a consequence in the end of sort of uh, admissibility of sort of the Jack A module of right, admissible smooth representation. Uh, uh, so, I mean, somehow this explains something uh, about where it's coming from, but then, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can really think about, and you can sort of think about the ordinary forms as sort of being sort of some sort of gen, like Jack A module for representation of this group. And really, sort of, you get sort of a natural identification of ordinary modular forms with so ordinary chaotic modular forms sort of get identified with uh, ACP. Um, and then you can take sort of the X of CD co-invariants. So it's a really like the naive Jack A module. I sort of, I should, I probably have to be a little bit more careful. So you should take sort of the closure of the XCP. When you take the XCP co-invariants, you should take sort of the closure of the image of sort of X minus. Yeah, it takes sort of the Bonac version of this. Uh, but but okay, but then, then you really get uh, that this is ordinary periodic modular forms. And this is sort of nice because it gives you an interpretation of ordinary periodic modular forms. It sort of looks more representation theoretic and sort of doesn't involve sort of saying something about like UP operators and ordinary projection. And then I mean, there are, I mean this Aguza variety is this ordinary Aguza variety that I'm using. Like, I mean, there's, there's one of these sort of over every, uh, every over every Newton stratum on sort of I mean, well, conjecturally every Shimura variety, but certainly every PEL Shimura variety sort of under mild conditions. And uh, you can sort of predict a finiteness, a similar sort of finiteness statement uh, in those cases too, sort of using this formulation. Um, I mean, so a point I didn't make, but sort of is related to this comment. Uh, in Piatic modular forms, we interpret sort of fun. So Piatic on more forms as functions on Aguza varieties. Well, in a function, like what is an Aguza variety in general? I mean, it's some analog of uh, like this space, like GL2Q mod GL2 of A. So the space GL2Q mod GL2 A sort of, it's just parameterizing sort of Q vector spaces of local structure. What an Aguza variety parameterizes in general is sort of some global object with sort of local trivializations um, where the global object is sort of the thing that sort of, well, for example, in this case, like underlie, would underlie uh, sort of this conjectural schultz kotlitz cohomology theory um, for varieties over FP. Um, so it's, and these Aguza varieties are sort of moduli of sort of like the global lattice with local trivializations in some cohomology theory. Um, and sort of in that interpretation, like the Aguza varieties I was working the, with in the piatic settings are sort of just as good as sort of this, like, is really the same thing as the, as this thing that we were working with in uh, in the uh, complex setting. So, and somehow phrasing things in terms of sort of functions on the Guza varieties and treating these as spaces of piatic automorphic forms, uh, in, it gives you an interpretation of automorphic forms in which sort of piatic automorphic forms and Archimedean automorphic forms are sort of on the same footing. Like you didn't sort of get piatic homomorphic forms by somehow interpolating something constructed out of the uh, complex theory. So you, so you just sort of have this idea that these should be functional in Guza varieties and sort of with complex functions in Guza varieties, you get the classical things and you get like a piatic functions in the Guza varieties, you get piatic automorphic forms. And then um, I mean, the problem with this being sort of these, I mean, except for very specific sort of piatic cases and then sort of these sort of trivial 
Archimedean cases, uh, the existence of these Agusa varieties or sort of even like what world these Agusa varieties should live in is sort of like completely up in the air and conjectural, but they can sort of somehow, anyway, well, anyway, sort of philosophically. So there, this was this philosophical, I said I was gonna make some philosophical points. That was the philosophical point I was going to make that sort of, if you think about Agusa varieties correctly and you sort of then sort of say automorphic forms are just functions on Agusa varieties, which is sort of at the very least compatible with classical, the classical theory and sort of the piatic theory interpreted this way, uh, then sort of you get sort of some very general notion that's sort of characteristic and an uh, characteristic sort of uh, neutral of automorphic form. Thank you. Sorry, that was yeah. that's not maybe, maybe a long-winded answer to whatever question. No, no, that's that. that's okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, any other question? Hi, uh, I had a quick question. So, in the near the end, uh, so you said uh, uh, regarding uh, how do you say this? Igusa subscript C uh, S. Yeah. So the Karyani yeah. Schultz yeah. is right. So so yeah. So this was so this type of Igusa variety was induced introduced by uh, Anna Karyani and uh, Peter Schultz in their paper on. Uh, uh, I can't remember the title of the paper, but their paper paper yeah, on homology and the Hodge uh, period map. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, so, uh, so you're saying that you know, uh, so the Frobenius that is induced by basically dividing by the Karenga subgroup. So, is it? I mean, is the remark that you say it's perfect means that it's bijective actually on this one? Or uh, yes, I see. Okay, uh, any next quick question? Okay, uh, thank you again. Uh, thank you, Professor Hao, for the talk once Thanks, again, sir. and we'll resume. Yes, uh, let's clap. Uh, we'll resume in 17 minutes for the next talk. Thank you. Thank you.